Hello there. Thank you for tuning in today. I'm going to be doing a short biography of an African icon and freedom fighter, Desmond Tutu. Last year, on December 26, 2021, Desmond Tutu, the former Archbishop of Cape Town, passed away. He was 90 years old. Tutu gained global popularity as a freedom fighter and anti apartheid campaigner. According to the Globe and Mail, the name Rainbow Nation, by which South Africa is also known, was first coined by Desmond Tutu. Archbishop Desmond Tutu was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in 1984 for promoting non-violence in the fight against apartheid. Tutu worked hard to bring global attention to the apartheid system in his native South Africa, which, alongside the world, was thrown into mourning upon his passing. According to South African President Semir Ramaphosa, Desmond Tutu gave meaning to the biblical insights that faith without works is dead. But who was Desmond Tutu? Let's find out together. Desmond Tutu was born on October 7, 1931 in Klerksdorp, the largest city in South Africa's Northwest province. He was the second child of his parents. His father, Zachariah Tutu, was the headmaster of the local Methodist primary school. According to Salem Press Encyclopedia, his parents had to pay for him to attend a missionary school. This same school was free for white children. At age 12, his family moved to Johannesburg. There, for two years, he was bedridden with tuberculosis and spent much of that time reading. He became close to a white Anglican clergyman, Trevor Huddleston, who visited him each week with books as his sick bed. Huddleston's influence on Tutu was significant. Tutu was an excellent student and graduated from high school in 1950. In 1953, he obtained a teacher's certificate and started teaching at high school level. The next year, Tutu obtained a bachelor's degree from the University of South Africa and in 1956, he married Leah Shekzane, also a teacher. The lifelong partners would have four children together. In 1958, the Tutus resigned their teaching positions in protest of the Bantu Education Act, which the apartheid regime in South Africa had introduced five years earlier to enforce segregation in education. Apartheid is considered to have been one of the most brutal systems of repression in modern times. Tutu was born in a race-based, unequal country, but apartheid was a different game altogether. Apartheid, which translates to apartness in Afrikaans, a local South African language derived from Dutch, was designed to enforce separation of black and white people in practically all spheres of life. From education and healthcare to transportation and access to public amenities like beaches, whites were separated from blacks who were offered inferior services and subjected to intolerable human rights abuse. Resistance to apartheid was led by icons like Nelson Mandela and the African National Congress ANC. Mandela was spent 27 years in prison for defying the South African government and its apartheid policies. To the extent that Mandela was acknowledged as the political head of the fight against apartheid, Desmond Tutu can be considered to have been its spiritual head. When Tutu resigned his teaching position in 1958, he decided to become a man of the cloth. In 1960, he was ordained as a priest of the Anglican Church and assigned to the Black Township of Tokoza. Tutu obtained a scholarship to study theology at King's College London in 1962. There, for the first time, he would experience a mixed society without segregation. It is likely that this impressed him deeply. In 1966, Desmond Tutu graduated from King's College with a master's in theology. Over the next decade, he would grow in the church and take up progressive appointments between England and South Africa. In 1975, Tutu was working in London when he was appointed Dean of Johannesburg, the first black person to be so appointed. He acknowledged being apprehensive and described the job as a daunting task. One report claims that many whites were angered by his appointment and left the church. The 1970s were probably when Tutu started to get noticed globally as an anti-apartheid campaigner. 
1976, after police opened fire on school children in Soweto and killed hundreds of them, Tutu wrote an open letter to Prime Minister John Foster appealing for a repeal of the apartheid laws. He warned that failure to do so could be disastrous for the country. Shortly after, he was consecrated as the Bishop of Lesotho and in 1978, he was appointed Secretary General of the South African Council of Churches, the largest non-denominational body of Christians in Southern Africa. In this role, at the head of 12 million South African Christians, Tutu would constantly challenge the state on apartheid and its evils. The Garden of London described him as a voice of the voiceless. Despite its devastation of black lives, Tutu always insisted on ending apartheid peacefully and reconciliation between the oppressors and the oppressed. Whereas Tutu advocated for a non-violent change to the system of apartheid, he never hesitated to point out that the first perpetrator of violence was the apartheid state itself. When in June 1980, crowds started rioting in Johannesburg to commemorate the 1976 Soweto uprising, again, police opened fire, injuring 35 people. Tutu warned the state that maintaining the same path would inevitably lead to a bloodbath. The South African government on its part viewed Tutu with extreme suspicion. Blinded by bias, they did not see that Tutu was a moderate who was heavily criticized by sections of the black community for not advocating violence. One Catholic priest even accused Tutu of not knowing how to hate. In 1980, Tutu led a delegation of clergymen that met Prime Minister Botha to discuss how to improve relations between black and white South Africans. Neither side could reach an agreement as Tutu's group insisted on an end to appetite while Botha considered black acts of resistance to be terrorism. Tutu advocated for the West to sanction South Africa. This angered the government and on two occasions in the 1980s, his passport was seized to stop him from campaigning abroad for sanctions. Tutu was globally recognized by different organizations for his peaceful approach to fighting apartheid. This included the $100,000 Athena Prize from the Onassis Foundation in 1981 and the Nobel Peace Prize in 1984. Throughout the 1980s, Desmond Tutu campaigned across the world for support against apartheid. He met many world leaders and called for an international boycott of trade with South Africa. However, the British government, led by Margaret Thatcher, rejected these ideas and continued to support the apartheid regime. While touring America in 1985 to raise funds and support for the anti-apartheid struggle, Tutu was delighted to see public demonstrations calling for divestment by American businesses with investments in South Africa. This contrasted with the policy of constructive engagement urged by the Reagan administration. Tutu noted that such engagement was insufficient as South Africa's black people would continue to suffer repression in the meantime. In 1985, Tutu was appointed as the Bishop of Johannesburg and he would hold this position until 1986 when he was elected as the Archbishop of Cape Town. He was the first black person to hold both of these positions. One thing Desmond Tutu was convinced about was that appetite was bound to end and he was never shy about saying so publicly. Indeed, by the 1980s, some of the repressive apartheid laws had been lifted, such as the ban on mixed marriages. For Tutu, such actions were welcome, but were no more than a token, considering that injustices such as segregation continued in education, considering that black South Africans could still not vote and were arrested in their tens of thousands for not carrying passes. In February 1990, the efforts of Desmond Tutu and other anti-apartheid fighters resulted in Nelson Mandela's release from prison. Apartheid would finally be abolished in 1993, and in 1994, Mandela would be elected president by a black majority. In 1995, Desmond Tutu was appointed as chairman of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission in South Africa with the objective of reconciling black and white South Africans. Desmond Tutu retired as the Anglican Bishop of Southern Africa in 1996 but he remained a champion of fairness. As chairman of South Africa's Truth and Reconciliation Commission, he threatened to resign when the African National Congress declared amnesty for its members who had committed atrocities while campaigning against apartheid. In Martin Meredith's account, Tutu observed 
that a gross violation is a gross violation regardless of who commits it and why. The Truth and Reconciliation Commission's report in 1998 indicted several apartheid governments for repression and criminal misconduct, but also condemned the African National Congress for gross violation of human rights. The Truth and Reconciliation Commission's report was hotly contested. Former President Frederick de Klerk and then Vice President Thabo Mbeki each tried to block its release through the courts or to amend its contents, but both attempts were unsuccessful and Nelson Mandela backed the Truth and Reconciliation Commission and supported the publication of its report. The report showed, for example, that apartheid governments had used death squads to target the system's opponents. However, it also showed that black groups like the African National Congress had encouraged violent acts like necklacing, which is the act of placing gasoline-filled tires around the necks of suspected apartheid collaborators and setting them ablaze. Meredith observes that whereas white South Africans did not show much interest in the Truth and Reconciliation Commission's proceedings, black South Africans were more than enthusiastic. Still, both communities did not feel reconciled by its work. For Tutu though, it was impossible to reconcile without truth, no matter how uncomfortable. Desmond Tutu was not only a leading light in the fight against apartheid, or simply the head of South Africa's Truth and Reconciliation Commission. No, he was a global leader and proponent for human rights worldwide. Alongside Nelson Mandela and Graca Markel, in 2007, Tutu co-founded a group called the Elders, a global group of elder statespersons committed to solving global challenges. The group included people like former American President Jimmy Carter and former United Nations Secretary General Kofi Annan. Tutu was the founding chair of the group and led it for seven years. He was vocal on political, economic and social issues like corruption, poverty, women's rights and disease. He promoted reconciliation in Rwanda following the genocide. He was also an advocate for LGBT rights. Tutu's view that Christianity needed to be more accepting of LGBT people was considered by some to be scandalous. He also attracted criticism for comparing Israeli policies on Palestinians to apartheid. Combined with his opposition to Zionism, some accused him of anti-Semitism. Desmond Tutu was the recipient of many awards and honorary degrees. The University of Toronto awarded him an honorary Doctor of Laws degree in February 2000. He was awarded the Gandhi Peace Prize by India's President Abdul Kalam in 2007 and the Presidential Medal of Freedom by US President Barack Obama in 2009. Desmond Tutu died on December 26, 2021, aged 90. He had been hospitalized several times after being diagnosed with prostate cancer in 1997. Besides Nelson Mandela, Tutu was arguably the other well-known face of the fight against apartheid. In line with his wishes, he was buried in a simple ceremony on January 1, 2022. A long-time proponent of the environment, he opted for the environmentally friendly burial practice of aquamation, which is akin to cremation but uses water rather than flames to produce ashes. The majority of South Africans today can thank Desmond Tutu for fighting for rights he did not himself enjoy for the greater part of his life. For instance, the first time he voted, he was already 62. Today, free courts, press freedom, freedom of association, critical opposition, and the freedom of movement form the key tenets of a free South Africa. All thanks to the little man with a big heart, Desmond Tutu. Thank you so much for spending your time with me today. I appreciate it. I've enjoyed talking about this amazing individual and African icon, Desmond Tutu. If you enjoyed the video as much as I did, please give it a thumbs up. We can certainly continue the conversation. Just leave a comment and I will respond. If you'd like to learn more about Desmond Tutu, his life work and philosophies, there are several self-written and third-party biographies out there. If you need help finding such books, let me know in the comment sections and I'm happy to help you out. Finally, please follow my channel by clicking the subscribe button and if you want to get instant notifications for new content, click the bell. 
Alright, go ahead, do that now. Click subscribe and click the bell. Subscribe and the bell. Thank you for watching and see you soon.